Old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, present Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. What's the matter with those eggs Waldo had for breakfast, Nick? They had nitroglycerin in them. What? Someone put nitroglycerin in the eggs? No. What? Then how to get in? The chickens that laid these eggs put the explosive in. What? The eggs were laid by chemical chickens. And now the case of the chemical chickens. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. In Nick's office, he and Patsy are busy with the morning reports. Uh, take this letter, Patsy. Right, Nick. To Mr. Jason Griggs. Here, sir, enclosed you will find a photograph taken on infrared film... Proving the will in question. Oh, Nick, boy, Nick, boy, I've been poisoned. If you don't save me, I'm a dead man. Now, Walter, look, we're too busy for practical oh, jokes. Boy, I'm feeling fast. If you don't find me an antidote, I'll be dead in two minutes. What have you got in that bowl? Eggs. Poisoned eggs. And I ate one of them. Are you kidding, Waldo? No, no, Nick. Some criminals have poisoned these eggs I was having for me breakfast. They're after me, Nick. Oh, nonsense. They've been poisoned, Nick. Smell of them here. All right. George, sit down, Waldo. Sit down? Oh, is it too late, Nick? No, you're not dying, if that's what you mean. I have to make a chemical analysis to be sure. But you may have stumbled onto something, Waldo. Find anything, Nick? Not sure yet. Oh, Patsy, get your pad. This is the last will and testament of Waldo Aloysius Smiglin, who departs this world foully murdered by his enemies. Quiet, Waldo. <laughs> you haven't been poisoned. Then what's in them eggs? Nitroglycerin. Uh, the explosive? I had dynamite for me breakfast. In minute quantities, yes. Someone put nitroglycerin in the eggs? No, the chickens that laid these eggs put it in. Oh, huh? Nick, are you joking? I'm not. These eggs were laid by chemical chickens. And nitro isn't a thing that chickens can pick up anywhere. I think I'll look into this. What do you think's going on, Nick? Can't tell you, but here's what we'll do. We'll all go to the store where Waldo's landlady bought these eggs. Uh -huh. We'll each buy as many as we can carry and bring them back here and test them. Who knows? Maybe we'll find crooks in our omelet. Yeah, this is the place, Nick. Bleak is gross. Now, those eggs were large brown eggs. Mm -hmm. we'll go in separately and order five dozen each. I'll go first, Waldo next, Patsy last, right? Okay. Right. All right, I'm going in now. Follow me after a few minutes, Waldo. Sure. Okay, bud, how many dozen eggs are you here for? Uh, about five. Five dozen eggs and a bucket dozen. Here's your dough, five bucks. Hey, what's this for? It's the payoff, but I'm shelling out for the bum eggs I sold this morning. I beg your pardon, sir. I'm Janet Steele, pure food inspector for the health department. If you'd like to register a complaint about the eggs sold by this man... Have a heart, lady. I'm handing this customer a five-buck bill. What more do you want? No, no, you don't understand. I didn't buy any eggs this morning. I want to buy five dozen now. Ha-ha, I'm laughing. This dame already confiscated every egg in a joint. Good morning, folks. I just dropped in to purchase a little hen fruit. No eggs in the store will be sold. Huh? That's right, mister. No eggs. No eggs? You, you, you got boxes of them back here. I've condemned every one of them. Looks as if we'll have to try some other place, my friend. Yeah, but why can't we get some of these here? Say, Nick, what in the... Quiet. Hmm? We couldn't buy any eggs. Let's get away from the store window. I want to go around, take a look in back of the store. What's this all about, Nick? Looks like a phony setup, Essie. Oh? I'm sure the man in there isn't bleaker. Unless I miss my guess, he's a crook posing as bleaker. Hey, what makes you think so, Nick? First place, the way he talked. Second place, by the money he offered me. I only got a quick look, but that $5 bill he offered me looked phony. But is this a counterfeiting case? It's worse. I'll explain it in a few minutes. Right now, I want to see what's happened to the real bleaker. Ah, let's see. Regular suburban back alley. Garage behind the store. And here's the cellar entrance to the store. Think we better duck down into the cellar and look around. Get that door open, Waldo. Right, Nick. That's it. Take a look in the garage. That's the place safe. Right away, Nick. God, this is a heavy door, Nick. Quiet. I'll give you a hand. Nick. Yes? Come here, quick. Look what I found in the garage. Holy smokes. 
It's a, it's a man all, all tied up and gagged. Try to be bleaker. Help me get these ropes off. Yeah, sure. Take off the gag, Patsy. Golly, I don't think he's breathing. Hey, maybe he's dead. No, no, he's still warm. Oh, thank heavens, Nick. Hey, quick, Waldo. Try artificial respiration. Yeah. One chance in a thousand, we can save him. All right, Nick. Listen, Patsy. We're yeah. in the spot. Yeah. I've got to call Matty for an ambulance Three. and pull motor at once to give this man a chance. Four. But when an ambulance Five. arrives, the crook inside the store is going to catch on. You've got to help me. How? Take off your hat. Four. Comb your hair into bangs. Three. Make your face up heavily with plenty of lipstick. Disguise myself as a tough, in other words. Four. Right. That thug Five. in there hasn't seen you yet. Two. So you can get away with it. Go into the store and get him out of there. Yeah. Get him out by hook or crook. And yeah. stay with him. Oh, trust me, Nick. I'll do it if I have to sing Tord songs. <laughs> Now, look, Nick, I'm pretty sore about this. What's the idea letting that mug in the grocery store get away? I didn't let him, Matty. Patsy took him away. You realize that we can't bring Bleeker to? It's a murder rap? It's more than just a murder rap, Matty. Well, how are they doing with the pull motor, Waldo? Uh, no luck yet, Nick. Nick, what's all this about poisoned eggs? Very simple. Chickens are funny birds. What they eat goes into the eggs they lay. Yeah. For instance, if a chicken eats mothballs, its eggs smell of camphor. No kidding. Fact. Now, somewhere in the country, there are some chickens that have been drinking water polluted with nitroglycerin. What's that? The eggs Waldo had for breakfast had traces of nitroglycerin in them. So? Might have been an accident, but when I found an obvious thug posing as a grocer in the store where the eggs are bought, I knew it was something else. Somewhere, Matty, up in the farming country, there's a crooked plant manufacturing supplies for criminals. Mm. Bootleg nitroglycerin for blasting safes, counterfeit money, probably everything that a crook can't buy legitimately. Holy smoke! And these polluted eggs are the giveaway to the plant, huh? Right. Some of the nitro must have seeped out accidentally and polluted the water in a brook or something that runs through a chicken farm nearby. Well, I'll be darned. That's why I had to hold on to that thug without tipping my hand. He's got to lead us to that place. Oh, what's the pull motor stopping for, Matty? Oh, the job is done, Nick. Oh, that man was practically dead when we found him, but he's alive now. You saved him, Oh, boy. good, good, Waldo. Can I question him? Oh, no, no, not, not for two or three days, the doc says. He is going to be tough enough just keeping him alive. Two or three days? Well, by that time, this whole mob may be a thousand miles away. Ah, it's all up to Patsy now. All we can do is go back to the office and wait for her to check in. Hey, Eddie. Yep? Close that door, will you? I can't hear myself sing. You're a funny babe. Okay. When you invite a lady to eat in a private dining room, she likes to be private. <laughs> I never knew old man Bleaker had a good-looking daughter like you. What a break for me. You coming into the store looking for him? Uh-huh. How come you mind in the store for him? He didn't say he was going nowhere. He got a rush call. Had to see somebody about some garage business. Ah. Uh-huh. He's going to be plenty sore when he hears I closed up the place to go eat lunch with his knockout daughter. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> Ain't that waiter ever going to bring us some food? Huh? I'll go call him. I'll get that punk moving. Okay, babe. <laughs> Important garage business. That's a good one. <laughs> Back already, babe? Hello, Carla. Janet. Uh, I thought you were... The girl you brought? No, she's outside phoning, Tyler. Phoning? When five will get you ten, she's calling a guy named Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Yes, Tyler, Nick Carter. The man who came into Bleaker's store to buy eggs this morning when I was posing as a health inspector. And that pretty face you're making up to belongs to Patsy Bowen, Carter's secretary. Well, uh, well I knew it all the time, Janet. I... You're a liar. Well, don't worry about it, babe. I'll take care Not of that Not for me, kid. you won't. You're quitting the gang, Tyler. You're too dangerous to keep around. Janet. Oh, oh. So long, Tyler. <laughs> Eddie Tyler sprawls over the table, two bullets in his heart, as Janet Steele slips out of the private dining room. With Tyler dead, Nick's only lead in the case ends. We'll learn what he does next in just a moment. And now, back to the case of the chemical chicken. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As we pick up our story, Nick Carter and Waldo have pulled up to the cafe in answer to Patsy's urgent telephone call. Hey, this, Patsy. Yes, what is it, Patsy? Oh, Nick. Nick, it's too late. I've lost Tyler. For what? good. You got away when you were phoning me? No. Someone killed him. What? Killed him? 
Well, where's he now? In the back room. Sprawled over the table. I, I went back and there he was. All right, Patsy. This is a tough break, but we'll manage. You got the car and wait. Right. Waldo, come with me. All right. Right, boy. Chance. Might have something in his pockets. No. No wallet. No papers. Nothing. Then then we're stuck, Nick? Not quite. There's one chance. His pockets and his pants cuffs. (coughs) What are you ripping his pockets out for, Nick? You'll find out later. Now, this is what we do. You telephone Mary. Tell him about this murder. Yeah. Then join me at the lab. Okay. Patsy goes to Bleecker's store to check the crates the tainted eggs were delivered in. Those crates are usually stenciled with the address of the farm that delivered them. Yeah, but what... If Patsy can find that address, it may tell us where Eddie Tyler came from. Oh. If she can't, we'll have to depend on his pockets and the cuffs of his pants. <laughs> Pocket steady wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be sure this vacuum cleaner picks up every particle of dirt and grit that's in it. Uh, this one's clean now, Nick. All right, give me the cuff of the pants. Okay. Clean them out, too. Look, I don't get it, Nick. Hold it steady. Mm-hmm. All right, that's clean. Yeah. And the other one. Okay. Oops, careful. That's it. All right, all finished. Yeah. Now we open the vacuum cleaner. Mm-hmm. And we have one porcelain trap filled with assorted dust. Dust. And this dust is going under the microscope right now. Why? It's going to tell us where Eddie Tyler's been during the past few weeks. How the devil can dust do that, Nick? Use your head, Waldo. Yeah, but, but there's dust in the air everywhere. But it's not all the same kind of dust. I find particular kinds of dust in particular localities. And that's what I'm counting on. <laughs> anything yet, Nick? Uh-huh, I think so. Huh? Patsy? No, it's the law. And darn good and sore, too, if you want to know. Find Eddie Tyler, Mary? Nick, this is a fine mess. You let Tyler get away so you can break the case and he ends up a corpse. Oh, when the commissioner hears about this tomorrow morning... The he... case will be ended by tomorrow morning. Are you kidding? No, hoping. I've been checking the dust from Tyler's pockets. What? Outside of ordinary dust found almost everywhere, I've found smelter dust, flower dust, and particles of dry hay, all in the deepest layers. That means Tyler's been living in a farming vicinity that also has an iron foundry and flour mill somewhere near. Would you like that? Give me that industrial map, Waldo. Right. Uh, Nick Carter speaking. Nick Patsy, I just finished searching Bleecker's store. Yes? It's no good, Nick. Every egg crate in the place has been destroyed. Not one left anywhere. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. This must be it. Huh? Nick, what on earth are you talking about? I've been checking my industrial map while you were reporting, Patsy. Oh. Matty, there's only one town in the near vicinity that's a farming center and at the same time has a flour mill and an iron foundry. That's Brickton. Huh? Brickton? That must be the place Tyler came from. I don't understand, Nick. Oh, you will pretty soon. Hurry back to the office, Patsy. You, Waldo, and I are driving up to Brickton right away. Brickton a half mile, Nick. That's what the sign said. Uh-huh. Now, remember, we stay undercover in this town. There's a sheriff in here that hates the very sight of me. Hey, did you have a run-in with him before, Nick? Yeah, in the Joplin case last year. But it was a, it was a run-in with her. Oh, hmm? uh, a lady sheriff? Like in Texas, eh? Hmm? Tougher in Texas. <laughs> sheriff Moss Stickney is convinced I double-crossed her last year. She'll do everything she can to obstruct me now, so we stay undercover. All right. Now, look, when we get into Brickton, you and Waldo each rent a car. Yeah. I've divided Brickton into three areas. Each one of us covers one of the areas. Uh-uh, here's the town line, Nick. Uh-huh. Now, each of us visits every farm in our area. And ask the farm owners if they deliver eggs to Bleecker in New York. Yeah, but wait, some of them farmers might not answer, Nick. Well, here are two $100 bills. You and Patsy each take one. Huh? If you meet a close-mouthed farmer, tell him this $100 bill was found in a crate of eggs delivered to Bleecker. He can collect if he has records proving deliveries of yesterday. Well, that ought to work. Oh, slow down, Nick. We're passing a rent a car or garage. Uh Uh-oh. Run by the terrible Ma Stickney. All right. Go ahead. 
Each of you rent a car. And we'll meet back here, 6 o'clock tonight. Good luck. This is farm number three for Detective Waldo McGlynn to examine with his piercing eyes. Yeah, Wilson's farm. Maybe we'll have better luck with this one here. Ah, uh, uh, it is a farmer. It's a farmerette I'm going to be questioning. <laughs> Very pretty, too, in them pants. Uh, uh, just a minute there, young lady. Yes? Uh, how would you like to earn 100... Uh, uh, it's the health inspector. Oh, I've seen you before, haven't I, in Bleecker's Grocery this morning? Well, ma'am, I... You're the famous Waldo McGlynn, aren't you? Nick Carter's great assistant. <laughs> you got the right man, ma'am. <laughs> but it's a secret. Nobody's supposed to know that me and Nick is up here. Mr. McGlynn, I'm certainly glad to see you. It's about those eggs, uh, the bad eggs. Oh, you found them then? Yes, they're, uh, they're here on this farm. I need your help, Mr. McGlynn. I'm only a weak woman and... You. <laughs> Waldo McGlynn's the right man for you, ma'am. Where are them bad eggs? There's a building back of this farm. Up this road a little. I'll show you. Good. Does Mr. Carter know you're here? No, ma'am. Waldo McGlynn works alone. Good. Now, what's the layout here, ma'am? You see that house there, right along the chicken yard? Yep. There's some men live there. They rented it from Wilson. They pretend to be scientists doing research, but they... I, I know, I know. They're crooks, ma'am. And making dynamite and burglar tools for more crooks. Well, in some way, the nitroglycerin they're making got into the chicken's drinking water and tainted the egg. I've already deduced that myself, ma'am. So this morning, when the eggs were delivered to Bleecker's Grocery in New York, Bleecker called Farmer Wilson on the telephone and complained. Uh, huh? And Wilson asked the crooks about it because he thought they were scientists. He couldn't understand it. Uh, huh? And the crooks realized that the tainted eggs might lead the police up here to their factory. Yeah, sure enough. So when they learned that all the eggs in this particular shipment went to Bleecker's, they rushed down to the city and tried to cover up by closing Bleecker's mouth and paying off all the customers who came back to the grocery to complain. Yeah, sure. They even had a woman pose as a health inspector to make it look legitimate. But, ma'am, you... Come into the house, Mr. McGlynn. The crooks aren't here now. Hey, yeah, but, ma'am, you, you were the health inspector. Yes, you... Mr. McGlynn, I was. Hi, Janet. Who's the character with the wool of spinach? Nosy little man. Works for Nick Carter. Hey, you can't... Stand still, McGlynn, and don't reach for that rotter or I'll blow you wide open. You're in cahoots with him. Shut You're... up! Bindle. Yeah? Carter's in town. You have to drop everything and take care of him. You'll never harm Nick Carter. Hide You'll down, never down, Grandpa. Bindle, tell the boys to get ready. We can tie up this character in the meantime. Okay. Oh, I no, forgot to tell you. I have to kill Eddie Tyler in town. He turned out to be a nuisance. <laughs> What time is it, Betsy? 6.30, Nick. Oh, where in blazes is Waldo? Should have been here at 6. Maybe he located the farm. Yeah, he's probably there now, blasting away with that old 44 of yours. That gun's a bigger menace to Waldo than the underworld. <laughs> Sheriff Stickney! Sheriff Stickney, is that you? Well, well, that's that health inspector from New York. Sheriff Stickney, the most amazing thing just happened to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Sheriff Stickney was in this car. If you want help, I'll be glad to give it to you. I'm Nick Carter. Not the Nick Carter? Well... I'm Janet Steele, a health inspector from New York. I was up here investigating a shipment of bad eggs. What did you say just happened to you, Miss Steele? Oh, it's the strangest thing. I found a car parked out on the road. It's one that Sheriff Stickney rents. And, and guess what was stuck in the windshield? Half of a hundred-dollar bill. In what road? Where? Just outside Wilson's farm. It was near a large white building alongside the chicken yards. Chicken yards? Nick, that's it. Yes, Patsy, come on. Let's get out there fast. <laughs> Heavy Roadster surges forward as Nick and Patsy drive into what is apparently a cleverly baited trap. We'll see whether or not the jaws of the trap close on them in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of the case of the chemical chickens of today's Nick Carter adventure, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. It's 7 o'clock. The night is pitch black. Alongside the White House behind Farmer Wilson's chicken yard, five men and a woman wait tensely, watching the turnpike road. He ought to be along any minute, then. Yeah. I took the shortcut. He couldn't be more than five minutes behind me. He'll be along. This is what we do, Bindle. 
When he comes waltzing in looking for Grandpa, we knock him and the girl cold. Uh -huh. We take the three of them over to the covered bridge and drive them in the car into the river. Big accident. Oh, better do it, Hold it, Bindle. It. Listen. It's a car. It's Carter. I know that car. Get set, everybody. When I give the word, give them the lights and show them they're covered. Looks like Carter and the girl. Uh -huh. All right, Bindle. Now. Yeah. Oh, you're covered, Carter. You and the... Holy! What's the meaning of this ruckus? What are you doing with them guns? Guns is illegal in Brixton County. That name's Sheriff. Your name's Bindle, ain't it? And yours is Steele. Well, you're both under arrest. We you... got you covered, Ma. I'm sorry, your number's up. Don't get excited, boys. Ma's gonna have a fatal accident along with Carter and the girl. The only accident I'm gonna have is to pull the trigger of this Tommy gun. Hey, that's Carter. Carter, where? On the roof of your little factory, covering all of you. The first man who turns the light toward me gets a head full of slugs. Your racket's finished, Janet. You wanna know why? Ask your lawyer. You'll be seeing a lot of him while you're trying to beat a murder rat. <laughs> hand it to you. You're all right for a New York detective. Laying the whole case in my lap the way you did was mighty generous. Oh, Nick, boy, I got to apologize. I failed me mission. Just when I had this whole mystery solved, I made one little slip. One little slip. You walked right into a trap with your eyes wide open, you and your 44. Oh, <laughs> Just know. one thing, Carter. How'd you know that story of Janice was phony when she tried to trap you and Miss Bowen? Well, Sheriff Stickney, three things. Before I came out here, I checked up and couldn't find any record of an inspector on the health department staff named Janet Steele. That was the first thing. Then I didn't like the idea of a health inspector working up here in Brickton. It sounded phony. She wouldn't have any jurisdiction up here. She sure wouldn't. But the slip that jailed everything for me was when she claimed to recognize Waldo's car as one of the cars that you rented. For a stranger in Brickton, it was obviously impossible for her to know that. So I pretended to fall into the trap. And that's all. Ah, you done it in great style, Nick boy. When you showed up on that roof with a tummy gun in your hands, you was old Sim Carter all over again. Ah, none of that fancy deduction stuff. No, sir, bullets and action. Nick, take Waldo McGlynn's word for it. You'll be a detective yet. <laughs> What about the adventure Old Dutch Cleanser will bring us next week? Before I answer that, Bob, I, I wish to remind our listeners that National Boys Club Week begins tomorrow. And as you know, sponsoring a boys club of my own, I'm particularly interested in this fine work which is combating juvenile delinquency so effectively. More than a quarter of a million boys find wholesome activity and entertainment in these clubs. Under competent leadership, they receive companionship and recreation and learn to develop skills and ambitions. According to law enforcement authorities, boys' clubs lessen delinquency wherever they're established. For these reasons, I personally, as well as the makers of Old Dutch Cleanser, wish to salute the boys' clubs of America for their great contribution in building the citizens of tomorrow. And now, next week's adventure. Oh, it scares me just to remember that case. If it scares you, it must be some story. What's it all about? Well, Bob, it started with a mysterious disappearance of a lot of new cars that were never found again. And just about finished when Nick and I ended up in an old abandoned quarry full of water. But thanks to a new shortwave device, we managed to solve the case. I certainly want to hear this story. Uh, what do you call it, Nick? I call it the case of the lucrative Rex. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Remember, when you go shopping tomorrow, get the cleanser preferred by more women in America than any other. Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Waldo is played by Humphrey Davis. Matty by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count... Use Old Dutch Cleanser.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.